The time is 7.30 a.m. It's 13 degrees Fahrenheit with clear skies and sun. Today's forecast calls for more of the same, with a high of 30 degrees and a low of 13 degrees. It's been a while since I last made one of these videos. I think the last time I made one of these videos was actually around this time last year. Besides the fact that you guys seem to like these sorts of videos, I think it's pretty interesting for myself to just document my life from time to time just to see how much has changed. For example, since my last video, I've moved out of New York City, I've changed jobs, I've moved to this new apartment in a new city, so I think in the future, looking back, it'll be pretty interesting to see what my life was like in certain points in time. Anyways, before we get into this video, I just want to quickly say that hedge funds take careful precautions to make sure that they don't leak any info about their operations, their strategies, things like that. So while I would love to give you guys a full in-depth inside look into a hedge fund and tell you guys all the interesting things I'm working on, out of respect for my company, I won't be going to too many specifics and I also won't be able to show you my actual place of work inside the office. But with that out of the way, I still hope you find this video to be insightful and entertaining. So without further ado, here is a recreation of what a typical day for me looks like working from home at a hedge fund as a risk analyst. The first thing I do when I log on in the morning is I boot up Bloomberg and my mailbox. I check to see if there's any emails that I need to respond to right away and if so, I'll address those first. If not, I'll get right to doing my daily morning tasks which include sending a daily risk email to the portfolio managers with some info that they need to know. I also have to run an automated Excel spreadsheet to compile a report for a portfolio so I'll kick that off. When that's loading, I like to load up Bloomberg, check for any economic data releases and catch up on any news. There's a nice daily news alert that Bloomberg has that shows five pieces of the most relevant and up-to-date news stories that I look at every morning. Once these initial few morning tasks have been accomplished, I like to use the morning hours when my brain is still fresh to tackle the hardest things I need to do for the day. As of the present moment, that happens to be a coding project, where I'm trying to develop a tool that will send out an alert via email with a piece of information my team monitors. My previous project was also programming related, where I helped develop a tool to calculate a piece of data that we needed for some of our commodity stress tests. At around 9 or so, I'll go make a quick breakfast, usually just some eggs. And of course, gotta have the hot sauce. On certain days of the week, my team and I will have a morning meeting where we discuss a number of topics, such as any interesting developments in the markets, any upcoming economic data that might move markets, any risks that we should be aware of, and what tasks we're all working on. Now, there's only four people on my team, and we all focus on different things, generally speaking. So for the rest of the day, if there's nothing else that we need to collaborate on, we tend to work independently on our own tasks. For lunch, my girlfriend and I like to eat something quick and easy and not a terribly large meal so that we can try to avoid that groggy feeling in the afternoon. This week, we're just doing some wraps with deli meat.
Throughout the rest of the day, I'll usually continue to work on my projects, but I'll also do, let's call them miscellaneous tasks if they do arise. This might include contacting a broker to set up some limits for a trader, doing some ad hoc analysis work for my boss for a presentation he's putting together, or checking some stress tests to see if they're functioning properly. The tasks really vary day to day and so do the markets I look at, whether it's fixed income, stocks, commodities, etc., which helps to keep the job interesting on a day to day basis. Also, depending on the time of the month, there are some monthly tasks that I do, such as analyzing and explaining the performance of some portfolio managers and what exactly happened in the markets that drove their performance so that the investor relations team can then relay that onto investors. The last thing I'll mention is that I do a lot of reading. If I'm between tasks or I want to take a break or if I'm eating breakfast or on my lunch break, I'll constantly be reading Bloomberg articles, Substack articles, Seeking Alpha articles, and other financial newsletters. Now, it is part of my job to stay abreast of current financial news and developments, but I also just really enjoy learning about markets and trying to deepen my understanding of things like how the economy works, how certain financial products work, market dynamics, and much more. And it's like that Aristotle quote goes, the more you know, the more you don't know. So whenever I have some downtime, I like to use it on learning. If I had to give an overarching summary of how I spend my day, I would say about 10% of my time is spent on my morning tasks and getting situated for the day. 50% is the main project or projects that I'm focusing on, which could take anywhere from weeks to months to complete depending on the complexity of the project. 25% is spent doing tasks tasks or ad hoc analysis that arise over the course of the day. And the last 15% is spent reading. At around 5.30 to 6, I'll typically sign off and then immediately go to the gym. It's no equinox, but hey, at least it's free. Since my apartment gym doesn't have a rack and barbell, I've taken a step back from trying to improve my lifts for the big three, those being squats, deadlifts, and bench press, and instead shifted my focus from trying to lift progressively heavy things to just trying to stay fit and healthy while still building some muscle. Also, I don't know about you guys, but new music just hasn't been that good lately, so I've been listening mostly to podcasts and audiobooks. My two favorite right now are the All In Podcast and Bloomberg Odd Lots. Odd Lots is pretty good for getting expert takes on all sorts of different topics related to the financial markets, and the All In Podcast offers some pretty insightful discussion on current events, and the cast can be very entertaining. I'm always looking for new podcasts to listen to though, so let me know in the comments what podcasts you guys enjoy or I should check out. After I hit the gym, I'll shower, make a protein shake, and help my girlfriend prepare dinner. We try to cook a large batch in the beginning of the week so that there's minimal prep time during the rest of the week. Salmon's pretty healthy and has a decent amount of protein, and quinoa is a pretty high protein carb, so we're having both to try to better hit our protein intake goals. After dinner, I'll take some time to relax. Right now, my girlfriend and I are watching The Bear on Hulu. It's a phenomenal show, and it really makes me appreciate food culture a lot more. I've always thought it'd be fun to open a restaurant or bar of some sort, but after watching the show, yeah, no chance. After this break, it's time to get back to work. With the last few hours before bed, I'll use this time to either plan my next YouTube video or edit an existing one. Or, more recently, neither, because I was editing a two and a half hour movie of my trip to Africa. But going forward, I'll hopefully be back on my rhythm. After getting ready for bed, if I have enough time, I'll try to squeeze in 30 minutes or so of reading. It's a great way to calm the mind and to desensitize myself after looking at screens all day. And then, at around 11 to 11.30, I go to bed, ready to do it all again tomorrow.